Hey guys, and welcome to the Raising Rices podcast. We're back again, and uh, we're trying out some new stuff, so that's exciting. And we're here again to talk about indoctrinating our kids. Oh yes, every week. That's <laughs> just, what we talk about. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. But for real, folks, we do want to talk about something that's really important to us, something that we've been talking about and enacting in our family, and we hope to inspire you guys, as always, with that. And that is today we're talking about casting a vision for your kids. Yeah. And when Darren says we're trying things new, if you haven't uh, heard yet, we are doing a video yeah, along with our audio for this podcast. And it is incredibly new to us to do video. Um, but you know what? We're here. We're doing it. We're being vulnerable. We don't know where to look, <laughs> what to have behind us, any of that. Yeah. So if you see a mess, it's just real life. Um, but Darren is totally right. Today we are talking about casting a vision. And in order to do that, you have to have a vision, right? It's so interesting, actually. So many, like, I guess I would call them influencers or people who are um, encouraging parents out there that we follow, have recently talked about this very same thing. And how this vision, this forward-thinking vision, is causing them to make decisions today in order that that vision may come to flourishing. Yeah, and there's this huge element where a lot of us have been parents for a while. We've grown in our faith. We've grown in our marriage. And we are realizing that we have had the privilege and the opportunity by God's grace to gain some wisdom along the way. And not that our parents did a bad job teaching us, but the world is constantly changing. And we want to be looking forward, Mm -hmm. hopefully equipping our children well to be making decisions quicker and be set up to make good decisions in a, in a way that's maybe faster than we came to some of those decisions or convictions or different things like that. Because of the need to have a faster conviction right. or uh, to be stronger in faith in the world that is turning so rapidly towards uh, sin. Yeah, and the world just changes right. so quickly now with technology. Um, you know, there is rapid change constantly in all areas i mean when we were growing up you know there's like once a year reward show for like you know pop culture or whatever and it it just goes so fast now it's like every six weeks it's something new yeah and we have to be equipped and ready and then equip our children to live in a world that is constantly putting a pressure on them to conform in some new way. Yeah. So our conviction is that we want to be forward thinking enough right. to help support the decisions for today. In order to have, or excuse me, in order to cast vision, we have to have vision. And that goes into a lot of different categories, which we're going to kind of go over a little bit during the character um, development part of our podcast. We always talk about convictions, about what character, and then about the challenges that are faced. And so to open this, I'm going to start with a story. Um, if you know or have heard of the influencer, his name's Jeff Beth Key. Right. And he does some incredible ministry things. He just announced yesterday or yeah. who knows, just recently. <laughs> yeah, within the last week. That he was moving his family from Maui to Tennessee. Yeah, big change. Big change. And, uh, you know, this is happening a lot. You might hear of, like, the great relocation era that we're living in. Right. And so it begs the question, why? Why would you do that? He had, like, a phenomenal home. He had this, like, high country home in in Hawaii. Just, like, orange trees and lemon trees in the backyard. Swimming pool. Surfing. You know, it it was... Posting pictures, like, rainbows in the background with his family swimming in the pool. It was beautiful. And and in a lot of Americans' eyes, that would be living in paradise. Literally. And so why move back to the mainland into not a supposedly prestigious place, necessarily... 
and make that huge change for your family. Yeah. Tell him and, why. And, and so it was interesting because what he was sharing was that it was forward thinking for his kids. Like right now, he said he loves raising his kids in Hawaii, but he's seeing the age coming quickly. They're like prime years of developing opportunity from 15 to 25 was the Eight. ages that he recognized as mm -hmm. that. And I would even argue younger than that. But he recognized that they needed to have business opportunity, economic opportunity. They needed to have um, a good faith community to meet somebody, to marry, mm -hmm. and living opportunities to be able to afford a house or rent or all of these things. And so he made a decision now yeah. that's forward thinking to not just how it's going to affect him, but how it's going to affect and set up his kids in their lives for the next 20, 40 years. Yeah. Another a fabulous couple, the Toplins, they do courageous parenting. They've done podcasts for years now and their biggest listen to or largest downloads right. was their podcast on relocation. And then just recently they did a follow-up one about relocating. Yeah. And the quite everyone wants to know why, why would you do that? Why would you move? And sometimes like we get asked that a lot now being in a new place too. Well, why? Yeah. Oh, why'd you come here? Yeah. And you know, it's good because it causes us to consider our convictions mm -hmm. and consider why we did it. We did another podcast on here earlier talking about in no way did we believe that moving here to Idaho was going to save our children. Right. But that every decision, every step, everything that we do has to be done intentionally and with a purpose so that God can, uh, God can use anything, but that we are being used by God in our jurisdiction of marriage and parenting. Right. So it's just really being responsible, right? It's, it's taking into careful consideration every action. We've talked about this before, but taking into consideration every action you take, what you do for work, where you live, what activities you do, all of those types of things in order to be crafting um, opportunity and a vision for your kids as you make decisions now. Yeah, because in no way is this podcast today about relocation. No. But what it is about is that forward-thinking nature. And what think about it this way. Here's another thing as we start to move into kind of the – areas that we think that this impacts or at least the areas we've been talking about it impacting think about this we talk about this frequently there's no neutrality so even if you think oh i'm uh gonna, gonna stay neutral on this then you end up in the place that we are today in the world where unbiblical ideas and ideologies have taken the forefront and they have cast a vision mm -hmm. for generations of people that now live that out. Yes. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure we're framing our decisions today and casting a vision forward for our kids. That's a biblical vision, a biblical perspective, a biblical worldview so that we're, we're building them up in that good biblical foundation or yeah. biblical way of thinking. Yeah. And in no way is what we do. I mean, like I'm coming back to, I'm thinking about Darren when he said earlier on, welcome to our latest indoctrination <laughs> podcast. Um, two things. One, we had a real go viral on um, Facebook and it was about homeschooling. And I cannot even begin to tell you, actually I don't even have to, you already know. Right. That that was the response. Are they going to have socialization and you're indoctrinating your kids? And to answer those both, yes, actually. <laughs> they will have socialization. And yes, we are going to be teaching our kids a biblical worldview. Because the Bible commands it. Yes. Right? Yes. Because as far back in the history of people having a personal relationship with God as the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. right? God commands them to teach their children the ways of the Lord. 
And then he goes on to condemn generations that have not taught their children the ways of the Lord. And so for us to think for some reason that because we live in the 21st century, we should ignore that is, I, I, I believe, a grave mistake as parents. And I would like to bring up the word manipulation. There is no, um, in in this forward thinking process, we are not trying to manipulate our kids into something, but right. rather walking out the truth of what we believe through joy and uh honor really right. right and through the grace that god has given us that we are wanting to model and show them this wonderful way of living right but it is only by the lord's hand his strong hand his mighty hand not our own right that our kids will be able to see that to walk that out and to live that it is not by our doing but we do have the jurisdiction to model and teach right it's it's by the lord's guidance and the lord's power the holy spirit working in our children's lives that they will hopefully be saved and that they will uh choose to walk in the ways of the lord i guess so our intention though is to model and then to show them the good fruit that comes from that way of life like we, I, I did a study in Proverbs with some men, and it was just so helpful and so encouraging to know that the Bible says, hey, if you walk in the way of righteousness, like in general, it will go well for you. That That is a good and blessed thing by the Lord. Now, of course, you can read Job too, and you can read that there are trials that come and they build our faith and we have to be humble before the Lord. But to, to teach our children the way of righteousness is to teach them a, a good and faithful way to live that in general comes with blessings from the Lord. Yeah. And you know what? It comes from blessings from the Lord for believers and for non-believers. Right. That common grace. Yeah, yeah. If if you do business with integrity, then people are going to want to do business with you. And that's true for the believer and the unbeliever. Yeah. And if you choose to lie, cheat, and steal, then you're going to end up getting caught or you'll end up paying for it in the end before the throne of judgment. But either way, living a good way of life according to God's law is good for all. Yes. So let's break down some of these characters or qualities that we are trying to be really forward thinking in. And it's going to be fun because as we're talking, you're going to also have the opportunity to think about, well, what is the world trying to encourage right. my child in, in this area of life? And first we're going to talk about marriage. I think that for us, we desire, if it is the Lord's will, that our kids do get married. And I'm sure that you could probably uh, fall in line with that as well. Obviously, there is a case for singlehood, and that does happen. And so the expectation is that we're following in God's will. Mm -hmm. regardless of marriage or singlehood. But let's just take a moment and talk about marriage. And let's talk about how the world views marriage and how God views marriage. And when we talk about that and we look at the difference, and this isn't going to be an exhaustive, this is going to be quick, right? Yeah. Um, couple, you know, attributes or ideas or um, biblical truths that come with marriage. When we think about that through God's lens, then are we like as the mom and dad living out that marriage, talking about that marriage, encouraging our kids to look for qualities like that in their future marriage. Right. It's, it's just the key of showing them the good things that God designed marriage for. Yeah. Right. The, the helpfulness that you have for one another, that you get to impact the world as a team together. Mm -hmm. that um, the the support and the encouragement and the sanctification that comes through marriage and then the witness that you are of the gospel, it 
it is such a blessed thing. Now, like you mentioned, of course, if you're called to singlehood, then Paul says that is a good thing too. But he says it is good to be married yeah. as well. And so contrast that to the way the world views marriage, that it is uh, a contract for what you can get out of it. And it's temporary. Ball and if, chain. Yeah. Ball and chain. You know, the old lady's dragging me down. That's such a different view of marriage than how the Bible describes the blessing that is a good wife. And so we want to be modeling that and then imparting that vision to our kids so that as they grow up, they're thinking about, wow, what what character traits do I want to look for in a husband? And what um, what benefit is it to me and to my children and my family if I find a man who honors God first mm -hmm. above everything else. Yeah. And practically, like Darren just said, that is modeling, right? right? How we're living. That's also being diligent in our teaching, whether that's during family Bible time and a verse comes up and you do, you know, a study or explicitly show like this is what God's truth is. But also, as we just briefly mentioned earlier about um, common grace and the benefits and the blessings of following in God's life law and God's truth is that you can share when you see those things or when you're personally living them out right that wow look at this because of this yeah right <laughs> yeah yeah such a benefit the next one is kids how we view children right so think about that for just a moment how does the world view having kids well, you can only have one and a half. Yeah, one, one point five, or whatever. And, might be less now. And, and the more hours you can spend away, the better. Or that you have to have this perfect Instagram life where you constantly entertain their every, you know, thing. You plate them immaculate food, and you take them to the park seven times a day, and you know, like, yeah, the 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 picture perfect way, right? But let's be honest that that especially the the struggle with the responsibility of children is not in alignment with what the bible teaches about children that children are a blessing from the lord mm -hmm. that a man who has children is equipping them to impact the world for christ and that that is a tremendous blessing and a tremendous responsibility, mm -hmm. but that it's a tremendous blessing. And I would even argue that the world sometimes thinks that it's not even a responsibility, that the kids are just going to grow up, they're going to turn out however they turn out, and that the parents are not supposed to have an impact. And you can kind of hear that in the in the common expression where people will say, oh, well, when they're 18, you know, like I'm just trying to get through until they're on their own. Right. And while there is, you know, obviously equipping that needs to happen for when they become an adult and a launching period, there's still, Lord willing, we pray mentorship and friendship. Right. We've had another, again, a podcast about raising future brothers and sisters in Christ and that's your children that you're going to, you know, be sitting side by side in church with serving, doing the Lord's work with Yeah. again, Lord willing. Right. And I just keep saying that. I know I, I you probably heard me say it like 10 times already, but I think it's important for us to remember that we are not the saviors of our children, but yet we do hold a responsibility through our own sanctification process and our own calling. But that is on us. That is not that to say that we are saving our children by doing this. Right. Um, also to echo what Darren said, we do believe children are a blessing. Yeah. And there is, if you were to ask someone, do you believe children are a blessing? I do believe that most people would say yes. Right. Um, unfortunately, I don't see that in the way people live, right. in the way they speak about children, in the way that they act out um, their lives with their children. I was just 
Like, it was so funny. I had a friend fly out here to Idaho. And, you know, I have my six kids, and she came with her four kids. So we had ten kids between us. I think the oldest was 11. And we, and me and her, went out to a restaurant. And every person, like the hostess, the waiter, the every person, wow, you guys got a lot of kids, you know. Um, and then, but when we left, everyone that we passed, wow, your children did so good. And we're like, children are a blessing. This is awesome. You know, but I think that with a lack of discipline and with a lack of training, children don't thrive. Right. right. And so then you see a dis, um, a, disruption, right. A disarray. Of yes. Chaos. And so then people think, well, that equates to either having too many kids or in their opinion, right. Right. Or having children come with you in, in general. But in we tell our kids before we go into public places or at home if we're having guests over that we get to be an example, a testimony to the gospel right. and to the truth that children are a blessing. And that is in a way setting not only for right now vision, but for future vision so that they can also feel that blessing for their kids and thus our grandkids. Right. That, and that's this thing that it is an amazing to me, like, especially in my work setting, I run into this a lot where you're working with a mixed age of adults and a lot of them are like the generation past me. And it, it is incredibly sad to me how many want grandchildren and their kids are choosing to not have kids. And this is where what we're talking about really hits the road, right? If we <clears throat> raise our kids and they always kind of hear this mumbling, grumbling behind the scenes about how much work it is, right? then that doesn't set them up. To be like, oh, I want to get married and have kids because kids are awesome. They're a blessing. Yeah. No, instead we've set them up to think, oh, I better go have my fun first. I better travel the world first because there's no way I can do that with kids. You know, like all of these things that are prominent in the world that get tucked into the minds of people. Yeah. And so we want to teach them children are a blessing. This is a wonderful gift from God. Not only that you get to disciple a person, but that, and that person gets to hopefully go out and impact the kingdom, but also just what a blessing it is to have children. Yeah. And so we teach them the blessing that they are, and then they hopefully carry that forward into their generation and we can encourage them what a blessing grandchildren are. Yeah. Like that is something that we are looking forward to. And, you know, some people are responding to this current day climate and fear. Right. And that is one reason why they're choosing not to bring children into the world. And so it is important that, again, we're coming back to right now and it is our opportunity and privilege to teach our children that there is nothing to fear right. but God himself. And it's interesting because regardless of your eschatological view, I, I know people on both major sides of eschatology that still believe that you should have children and raise children to be an impact in this world regardless on if they think the general trajectory is that it's going to get better or worse. Right. And that to me is even more encouraging, right? Yes. Because it, it's not, Oh, you know, only if you're post mill, should you have a bunch of kids, but that the, since the Bible tells us that children are a blessing, <clears throat> we should believe that we shouldn't yeah. pull back from that and try to make excuses. Imagine so many generations before us, if they would have, ignored that like think of the puritans we just uh. talked about that recently in our podcast um but uh, about church history yeah and what an encouragement that is but think about the puritans if they all decided wow this church persecution is terrible we can't worship the way we want there's no way we're gonna bring children into this that would have been a tragedy of the the growth of the church 
and the growth of our nation today as part of a side effect of that era. And what what a loss Mm -hmm. that would have been. And so we shouldn't think that we live in some special time now. Right. (laughs) It is a special time in the sense that technology (laughs) and, (laughs) and so many things are so different than they were. But spiritually, the world always has darkness and always has light. And we should not shy away, but instead seek to continue to overtake darkness. Right. And in all of these things, in all of these character traits that we're talking about or vision casting in different categories that we're talking about, the appeal to our kids has to be founded in the joy of the Lord. Right. Right. The joy of the Lord is what gets you past that fear. Right? The joy of the Lord is what helps you identify and live out the blessing of children and the blessing of marriage. Right. And so it's it's casting a vision through the amazing things that God has given you so that you can then in turn teach and show your kids these wonderful blessings like marriage, like kids, like grandkids. And, you know, we briefly touched on this earlier, and I think another um, quality of uh, casting vision, and I'm not going to get into it too much because, like I said, we already did a podcast episode about this, but is the church Mm. and what you are casting a vision for your kids about church. Oh, that's such a good one because we've talked to, like you said, a little bit about this, like is the baseball game or church more important? Right. What is the attitude that you have? How, how, what is even your wording around like, Oh, home group is tonight or Bible study is tonight Mm -hmm. or, or whatever that is. Like, are you stressed out and exhausted? And you're like, Oh, we have to go to this thing because they're expecting us to be there. Or are you like, wow, we get to go fellowship with believers. We get to sit under teaching of the word of God. We get to pray together. Like those things are so impactful. And then, so everything you do, right? We've talked about this. All of your actions now, they wrap around what your vision is. Mm -hmm. That is not just impacting the way you live your life, but impacting the way your kids are going to be viewing what it means to be a member of the body of Christ. And hear us, we do not have this down or perfect by no. any means. Are you kidding? But that's why we're doing this podcast to both be sanctified ourselves and to encourage other parents in this. But we have been personally convicted lately that even though that is our heart position, is that church is imperative, it's important, we're going to be there on Sundays, we're going to be at the things that we can, or that we have committed to, um, like thinking of groups and such. But... As a mom, as a dad, trying to get children ready for church all in the car and feeling anxious, we have definitely fallen victim to being harsh or being hurried. Right. And that is something that we feel like it's really important that we need to work on is that this is a joy to participate in the body of Christ. We need to start that in the house first before we get there. Right. And it, you know, it it provides some self-reflection on multiple fronts, right? First to self-reflect and, and repent and grow in the way that you respond to situations. And then two, to work out, how to best equip your family to be ready. Like, I think we've finally gotten into a groove in our new house here with our kids at the ages they all are. (laughs) Everybody has to wake up at least an hour before (laughs) you're ready to hit the door. And that gives them time to, you know, shoes and get dressed and eat and brush their teeth, hopefully. And you know what I mean? But it's it's good. And like just the other day, we had a, a ton of snowfall kind of unexpectedly here. And uh, our main transportation is not four wheel drive. And we have a 300 foot driveway and another <laughs> 400 feet of unplowed road after that. Mm. And so uh, we were not going to make it out of the driveway in that vehicle in the morning. And 
it would have been an easy out to be like, oh, snowed in, (laughs) gotta stay home from church tomorrow. But I took the opportunity to try to forge a way out of the driveway with the tractor. And I think that it is, like, you think in the moment, like, oh, that's not impactful. But it was impactful, and you know it's impactful because then my son, who's eight, nine, 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 he comes downstairs, supposed to be in bed, comes downstairs and wants to offer to help so that, because I'm out there making it so we can go to church in the morning. Mm. And he wants to be a part of that and be helpful to the family in that. And so you can just see the future steps that someday he's going to have that same thought when it's his family. Yeah. And you know what? This That's a really great lead-in to family teams. We yeah. want to cast a vision for family teams for our family, and that definitely starts now. Um, and, and this is probably one that we have pondered a lot about, like, well, what do we do other than just promoting good, healthy sibling relationships, parents, um, kid relationships? What takes us beyond just the relational part into the team element? Yeah, and it, it really is, again, teaching it over and over and over. And then you find opportunities, but it's it's interesting to watch how in their nature it is it, like if you have a, a list of tasks and it's, you know, family team, clean up the living room, you know, or whatever. <laughs> if you list out the tasks, they will work hard to finish their task. And then they're, they're, out. they're natural <laughs> is they want out They're They're done with that. They checked off, you know, sweep under the table and they're out. But that step towards building a family team has been one of the things for us recently has been saying, okay, now that you've done that so that we can all do this fun thing that we're looking forward to together afterwards, find who else needs help. Yeah. And then it it motivates not just the person who is helping, Mm -hmm. but the person who's being helped to realize who I better hurry to and work efficiently and work hard so that all the members of the team are working together. Well, now yeah. that doesn't always go perfectly. Trust me, but it's the idea mm-hmm. that we're working towards. Yeah. And like, I know we've talked about that. We have a family farm that we've just started since moving here to Idaho. And one of the things that is constantly on our lips and encouragement is to tell our kids as a family team, there is no way that we could have done this all without you. Oh yeah. In the time that we did with the quality of work that we did. And we really want to make sure that we are with our words and our actions, pointing out the benefit of a family team. Now where that will go in the future, we pray that that, each of our children's families will have a family team. We also pray that we can cultivate a larger family team um, that still the siblings that exist right now with us and their spouses and their kids. That's again, Lord willing, but we want to kind of cultivate this family dynamic where family is not just family, but it's it's your your biblical family and your actual blood relation, right? right. Yeah, and it's it's tough for me to not um, to to teach gently and not be overly harsh with this, but t- trying to emphasize to the kids like, were you watching out for your brother there? Were you watching out for your sister? Did you leave her to do that by herself? And just prompting their minds to be thinking in that way yeah. when they're relating to each other throughout the day. And again, that will go well with them, not just in the sibling unit, right. but in their families to come. The last one we want to talk about, and again, there's many more that could be said, and there's many more details that could be said about each of them, but we do want to cover gender roles. We did What? I know. <laughs> we did two great podcasts about biblical manhood and biblical womanhood. Again, 
because we're passionate about making sure that these podcasts are short enough that can be consumed um, and inspire you to want to dive in more to other um, resources. We gave snippets about the biblical man and the biblical woman, but it is so important that you're starting those thoughts and trajectories of biblical-minded gender roles when your kids are young, because I tell you what, the world most definitely is teaching them about their interpretation of gender roles. I I mentioned that reel that went viral has like, you know, two, I don't even know how many millions of views now and comments all galore. But um, it's there. The world is very concerned that the girls and the boys are doing the same thing. And right. while God is also concerned that boys and girls, men and women, know that they are equal in value, right. we are still different in role. We are still given different qualities, and. Again, this can be argued much, much fancier by people that study this way more. But even in our own life, even in our children, you can already see the strengths and the weaknesses yeah. of both genders. Oh, yeah. And, I don't, you know, we're talking about how, you, how what you do today casts the vision for your kids, right? And so it's, I think it's simple things like when we point out to each other in front of the kids, wow, your mom is so loving and caring in that and, and cultivating whatever it is, whether it's a relationship or a, a plant or sourdough, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it, and, and then the, the opposite, you know, you're like, wow, dad, good thing dad's strong because mama could not have done that, you know? And just, or, or brave or, right. or whatever those things are. Yeah, we're not trying to generalize things. Yeah. But like, I mean, the simple thing, like if uh, one of our daughters has a spider in her bathroom, she knows who to call. Her brother. I mean, or her dad, yeah. <laughs> but she does call her brother too. I mean, they know. They know right. who has that gifting. And the crazy right. thing is, is now the brothers will just, will, they will step up and, yes. and be, you know, yes. straight finger or piece of tissue or whatever but we are not bug savers in this house just so you know and if that turns you off from this podcast sorry sorry (laughs) but it's just this it's it can even be simple encouragements and so if you want more about the character qualities of uh men and women that we see in the bible go back and listen to those podcasts and keep listening because we always bring it up (laughs) but Keep in mind that the way that you build each other up in your marriage and the way that you encourage your children to live out those character qualities that we've talked about in the past, that is you casting a vision for what their life looks like in the future. Yes. In joy, in example, right. in faithfulness to the word, and um, it's, it, it has to have fruit. Right. I mean, it might not have the all the fruit that we envision, but it will have fruit in again, I'm bringing up that common grace thing again. If you're following in the Bible's instruction, right. There is only good that's going to come from that. You careful, we're going to start start talking about theonomy. <laughs> but um and let's keep in mind too again that we're not trying like like we are discipling We're not manipulating or artificially engineering our children to be a certain way. We still understand that each kid has their own personality. They're going to have their own strengths and weaknesses that the Lord is going to work on their hearts. And any one of the things that we maybe mentioned along the way, those, those aren't the defining characteristics of like, Oh, he's a man or she's a woman, but that we the the character that comes behind those things um, are the things that are described in scripture. So whether you are a great biblical man who works at a desk or who is a welder underwater, it it doesn't, that doesn't define it. You can drive a Prius or a truck that doesn't make you a man, but what does make you a man is the character with which you live your life with. Yes. And so, we want to be encouraging 
that. And in all these areas, marriage, kids, grandkids, gender roles, church, our role in the church, and our family team, these are things that we can be casting vision for and really shaping and discipling our children into having a biblical view of these things, not the view that the world would hand them on a silver platter. Yeah, and that is exactly the challenge, right? It is the challenge for believers today. It is the challenge for believers hundreds of years ago. Right. Is that we are called to be different, right? We are called to be countercultural because the culture desires things that the God does not. Right. And we get faced with convictions in sight of challenges. The convictions that we hold are directly caused from the challenges that are we are faced in this world. Right. It brings it to our mind, and then we go to the Word of God, and we see what God says about it, and we work diligently to live that out. And, and that's something that's consistent through all of history, of people believing in, in the Lord. I, it, it just brought to mind like the, how countercultural the nation of Israel was in ancient Palestine, where pagan idol worship was rampant and they were called to worship one God according to his specific directions and talk about countercultural, Yeah. Like completely different than the culture around them. And we live and we walk in a different world, but it's the same counterculture on us that we need to live with. Yeah. Guys, this has been a great conversation. And of course, we've gone over on time because yeah. that is just what we do. <laughs> but we really hope that you're encouraged today. And we, if you are, would you share this podcast with a friend? We're working really hard to step in to the calling that the Lord has given us to share our hearts, our convictions, so that it may bless others. And um, you can always find us on, um, our, on either Spotify... Apple, Apple iTunes. I, thank you. I keep yep. calling it iTunes, but I think it's Apple, Apple Podcasts. Podcasts now. We're also on show, social media at Raising Rices, at Lead Your Family. And, um, and if you want an extra laugh, oh, yeah. go uh, watch this on, on YouTube. our YouTube <laughs> and you can see all of our shenanigans. Oh, you guys. <laughs> This is good. This is so good. All right. Well, we're so excited to see and talk to you all next week. We'll see if we have a different uh, background next week. Yeah. Watch the video. It'll change every week. <laughs> have a great week, guys. See ya.